Right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again, your weekly MMA podcast brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. studios, Bueller and Dodge at the mics, and of course, bringing you the news for UFC and all other MMA. Big thanks to Fight Fans Radio Network for bringing us up on their Spreaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud as well as, as, well as their iTunes. Uh, you can check us out on our very own Spreaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and our official website, please, splitdecisionmma.com. You can get us on Instagram and Twitter, SD underscore MMA, and on Facebook. Give us some love. Facebook is a Split Decision MMA Podcast. This week, we got the, well, the Ultimate Fight Night that was in Abu Dhabi. Big recap of that, which just wrapped up shortly. Like, like an hour like, ago. Like an hour ago. Yeah. And, uh, and a bunch a bunch of news, which Dodge has for you right now. Split Decision's on it first. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I hate to break your heart here with this first opening story. Kyra Gracie is pregnant. She is off the market, fellas. Y'all weren't uh, supposed to know that I was dating her. That was supposed to be well, a secret. Well, apparently she's having this dude's kid. This is Malvino Salvador. He is no, a she, Brazilian actor. He just thinks that she's having his kid. It's really my very kid. dreamy in that round bed of his. I'm pretty sure it's impossible to be. He says, <laughs> he says, bring it on, dude. Look at him. Look at him. That's a Come at me, Come bro. at me. Come, Come at, at me, bro. bro. Lucky uh, bastard. Good news is, she says, after she's done being pregnant, she will enter the UFC. That's yeah, her goal. Yeah. We'll see about that. That's her goal. I mean, I'll have to give her credit. You know, once once she pushes a baby out, she'll be have a higher pain tolerance. True, but you know, she has been working on her hands, getting 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 back into fight shape after having a kid. Now oh, there's a couple there's a couple women in the UFC. <laughs> I like how have, he talks about it like it's, it's impossible. Over. It's over. I've yeah, there's there's women in the tried, UFC that currently have kids. <laughs> nah, whatever. I believe when I see it. <laughs> the women in the UFC have adopted kids. <laughs> They're not real. They're not real. <laughs> so we have more trash MMA. Now we have a uh, team fighting championship that's got put on our, our uh, Facebook earlier this week. I got it. I got it. It's funny. Cause it just I, looks like a street fight. Oh, totally. I, I brought it up to Eric. Eric's the one who sent it to me, and then you had, put, you had posted it, and I posted it on the split decision page. Yep. What's funny is that we talked about this last week, and we, we brought up like what's going to be the next, What's next crazy fight thing. Yep. And we thought animal tag team. Yep. But, but this just is just regular tag team. Yeah. <laughs> five, five on five, which really, once you get one opponent out of the other team, you pretty much have it won. Yeah. Then it goes to five on four. Then it goes to five on three. You know, unless you got one dude in there who is just used to prison fights. You know, you, you once you lose one guy, you're kind of fucked. So this goes down in Poland. This was Pol- they had Poland versus uh, Sweden. Watch, here comes all the Polish jokes again. They had their first. They're gonna after something like this. They more, had their Polish first, uh, more Polish jokes. Yeah, they always forget the punchline. <laughs> I think we need to go back to the, the lingerie one. I'm more happy with that. I'm more happy with that one too. <laughs> Did actually the discussion though with Eric about the animal tag team thing got interesting though. Yeah, we Was both decided. Yeah, we will. We decided a tiger probably wouldn't be the best idea because the tiger would probably turn on you. <laughs> yeah, at some point, probably immediately. I mean, if it did on Siegfried and Roy, and those were the, with those animals for like years, exactly, exactly, and in gay relationships too. So we're I mean, Siegfried and Roy, with, not wait, the with the tigers, not the animals. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well, we really don't know. We don't know what happened behind closed doors. We kind of came to the conclusion that it might be the best to have a well trained, uh, some kind of like yeah, chimpanzee or something like that. Didn't yeah, because karate monkey is always He-Man a good idea. Had a tiger, what's that? He man, he had a tiger, but he's he man. Oh, okay, I mean, he I also don't... wore a fur loincloth. Him and Battle Cat you mention a... it. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Battle Cat had a very special relationship, <laughs> you know. But yeah, so Will Train Monkey is kind of where we ended up. I was, I was feeling bad for bringing it up, but you guys got names and descriptions. <laughs> I'm feeling okay again. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even sure that him and Shiri didn't hook up at least once, even though they were yeah. brother and sister. I'm saying it could have happened. Dude, he wore a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> could could have happened with a flowy plus, shirt. And he had a gay. He had a gay ghost. Yep, Orco, dude. Yep. I'm telling you right now. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we decided that a, a, a trained I don't chimpanzee. Think, I don't think Karate Monkey is the best way to go. I've seen that end badly. What about a baboon? Like on the rundown? Those, were, those <laughs> things were wicked, dude. Yeah. You could train a baboon a little bit to help you out. I was also thinking a kangaroo might be cool. Kangaroo is cool. What was uh, Clint Eastwood's? That was a chimpanzee? He's a chimp. Ninja chimp? Clyde. Yep. Left Clyde turn Clyde. Chimp. Left turn Clyde. <laughs> 
Or <laughs> if your opponent does have a tiger, then you, your perfect character or your perfect teammate should be a penguin that you throw at the tiger immediately so you don't have to worry about the I just tiger. thought steak. <laughs> just feed it. <laughs> Who do you want to take in the ring with you? Steak. <laughs> <laughs> just throw that at your opponent. There you go, yeah. Game no, over. rub it on a couple other opponents <laughs> and then throw it at the tiger. <laughs> perfect. Coming soon to a TV near you. And you know what's funny is us saying something like this sounds crazy, but I mean, people, there's over a hundred thousand dollars into that production of of whatever $100, that thousand dollars. They had tires and rope for ring. They already <laughs> okay. There was there was tens of dollars. There we go. There we go. I'm all right with there's, that. There's already animal tag team in Africa somewhere. I, Zimbabwe, I guarantee you, it's happening. Just haven't got cameras there yet. Yeah, there's somebody, somebody's partner is a fucking crane or something. So the UFC EA. Sports uh, UFC game has been talking about how they want to have a hidden character in the game. They've been teasing about it for the past two weeks. And now the character, they, they put up clues like they've never fought in the UFC. They're going to fight in four different weight classes. Was born in the United States. And that fighter is Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. They're going to have Bruce Lee as a um, character. My favorite part about this whole thing is, is that you can get Bruce Lee character only if you beat it on the hardest mode possible, career mode. On the hardest difficulty, or I just I didn't know Bruce Lee was born in the United States, or if you pre-order from GameStop, <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> which of I, I'm like, ah, yeah, just pre-order from GameStop. I'll just pre-order from GameStop. <laughs> you mean I can put a dollar down and get a free character and not have to actually play the game? Cool. There you go. He's gonna fight in 125, 135, 145, and 150 pound five, 155 pound weight class. Are they gonna have uh, cross weight class fights? Yeah. Know. You, I, they said you're not. They said uh, the rumors have been dispelled that you will not be allowed to use a female fighter to fight a male fighter. Boo. What? Nope. Not allowed. Equality. <laughs> Bullshit. That's crazy. Never stop the most street fighter. Yeah, I want, it's true. I want Ronda Rousey to fight Bruce Lee. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Now. I'm just going to use Bruce Lee to beat everybody. Why would you want to rip Bruce Lee's arm off? I don't know. Well, who would win in that fight? That's the question. <laughs> the arm bar. <laughs> Bruce Lee. What other, arm bars, too. What other fantasy fighters should they put <laughs> in the UFC? She would suck him in with a hug. She'd be like, hey, come here. Joe Rogan. <laughs> I want to see Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan be dope. As a, as a character. Clint Eastwood. Which Joe Rogan? <laughs> Eddie Bravo. The heftier Joe Rogan of, of today, or no, the fight, uh, the fear factor Joe Rogan that choked somebody out on a show. He's yeah. not, he's not hefty. He's just like all man. Like okay. he, is, <laughs> he has bolted himself up by eating his wild boar and taking Alpha Brain <laughs> and on it and using monkey zombie kettlebells that he has. <laughs> I would want to mess with he's Joe scary. Rogan. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also the new trainer for Alpha, or well, yeah, right. for Team Alpha Male. So Team Alpha Male, so. So we can go up to Sacramento and see him? Uh, apparently. Mm-hmm. We, should, we should just like make, make blowfish faces on the glass with a <laughs> Perfect. We got so, it from a completely unreliable source. <laughs> Perfect. Jail Sonnen and... Was it Uriah Faber's Ask Me Anything on Reddit? <laughs> and Vanderlei Silva uh, has been delayed now to July. Surprise! UFC 175. So it's not going to be in May. This is not going to be the main event for the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. This is the shit we've been talking about for months, people. This is what's going to happen. It's now going to be July 5th, UFC 175. This will be the co-main event. The main event is still going to be Chris Weidman coming off his surgery against Lyoto Machida, which also got moved from I'm May. I'm still convinced it's not going to happen. We'll see what happens. Who do you think it's more for now? I was I started thinking about it last night. Do you, you think, think it's more for... For uh, Vanderlei or or Sonnen to get used to the TRT? I think it's both. I think yeah. Vanderlei's looking fat, and I think <laughs> and I think Jail Sonnen needs to get off the juice. Because <laughs> I know this whole time we've been pushing that it's it's all about Vanderlei trying to get out of it somehow, right? But then I, you know, an extension that would help both of them. Oh, definitely. I don't know if Jail Sonnen's off the TRT for too long, he's going to get fat and get bitch tits. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a problem. Uh, you think that's what happened to Shamrock at the end when he cut weight? He just got off the juice. When trade? did he start trying to fight himself? Thought it was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching. I was just watching uh, uh, the Adam Sandler uh, prison football movie the other day. What's that one called? The Longest, Longest Yard. Yard. Longest Longest Yard. When, when they start giving Kevin Nash to, uh, estrogen. Yeah, estrogen. Hilarious. Yeah, that's what I picture these fighters going through when they get out their TRT. <laughs> You're so emotional. <laughs> just crying and but you look so fantastic. <laughs> it's all about the team. <laughs> all right, Jake Shields. Jake Shields got released last week. Holy crap. What? Yeah. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a million uh, Jake Shields fans showed up out of nowhere who've never been around in the UFC before, and we're like, "Why'd you cut Jake Shields? He's such a good fighter." Because he sucks. It's the same thing that happened when John Fitch got cut. I mean, everyone was like, "John Fitch sucks. He's boring." Wait, what'd you cut him for? We liked him. No, this is just like the Nick Diaz thing. John, I like, I we're like fans, but 
you got to perform. Yeah. But- Straight up, I like uh, Dana White's quote, which is, he's never going to be the guy. The thing <laughs> is, but you compare Jake Shields to John Fitch. John Fitch actually won, though. Yeah, but he was still boring. He was boring, but he was and- more, he was more, cons- he was more consistent than, than, than Jake Shields. I don't know. As far as winning goes, he definitely yeah. was. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't boring. I like, true to, true to Dana White, he, I think he's been listening to our podcast. This is exactly what he says about Jake Shields. He says, I like Jake Shields, but let's be honest. He was never going to be the welter. He was never, he wasn't going anywhere in this welterweight division of animals that we have. He was on a downswing. He's never going to be the guy. His stand-up has never improved. He hasn't shown anything in his last couple of fights that make you go, holy shit. <laughs> right now at this point, he's just another guy. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, how long have we been saying that? Uh, two years. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I mean... I, and then, like I said, all of a sudden, all these Jake Shields fans showed up out of nowhere and was like, why'd you cut him? Yeah, but what about, like, Orion not being able to perform in, in title fights? True. But he but still it, puts on a show. Still puts on a show and is still in the top ten, and that's the best part. Another thing Dana White says, he's like, everyone's outraged we cut him, but it's the same thing with Jake. He says, the media didn't even think he was good enough to be in the top ten. The media is the ones who set the UFC's top ten. He wasn't ranked in the top ten, so of course they're going to cut him. Yeah, if he so, was such a good fighter. Why didn't they keep him in the top ten? So now they vote, they yeah, do like an AP thing. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, they they turned it over. That's the thing. They were all upset about the rankings because Dana White would give his opinion or whatever. So they decided to turn over all of the rankings to the media. Because you can Dana actually White apply. Really care about the top ten? He's he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And so he's basically he's turned it over to the media and said, "All right, fine. You guys figure out who our top ten is. Okay. I will give you guys. You have to apply to become uh, on the voting committee." And How do we apply for? To be on the we won't get on the voting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, just, that explains a lot of what. <laughs> it, it explains a lot of what we consider to be mismatches. Mm-hmm. When in actuality, that's not that could not be their actual place. You know, that's not how the UFC sees them in their place. Right. But that's how the media sees them in their right. place. Right. Right. Yeah. Melvin Gillard got signed with the World Series of Fighting over the weekend. Go kill everybody. Think he's gonna be champion. <laughs> It's entirely possible in his weight class, yeah. Yeah. As long as he doesn't do something stupid. But, I mean, Melvin Gillard's ground game, I think Melvin Gillard's ground game, this is sad to say, has actually improved enough to where he could he could definitely dominate in the World Series of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> he's no good in the UFC, but, yeah. yeah. At least he got a job. At least he's got a job. You know, it's, got, it's hard when you put up so much time and, and dedication to being a fighter for what? How long has he been doing this? Like eight years? I don't know. He changed it's, camp so many times. He put, look, he put more dedication into moving than he did fighting. This is true. <laughs> and he's real fast. Yeah. He's a lot quicker than he most. He moved in like a day. Well, that's what, like, I mean, he went from Florida to like New Mexico <laughs> no, to California cocaine, to dude. New York. It's cocaine. He could pack up hella quick. <laughs> that was one time, man. If one time got caught for it. <laughs> this is, that's, like, that's like you suck a dick one time. You're no longer a bridge builder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, McDonald versus Woodley. Yep, it's going to be the number one contendership bout at UFC 174. Okay. And they're saying that uh, Johnny Hendricks will be back in September and November to defend his belt then. Yeah, no, Who are you taking, McDonald or Woodley? Uh, this, Tyrone Woodley is so much bigger and so much stronger. Uh, McDonald's Muscles don't win fights, man. No, but and, and, and the problem with McDonald's is that he doesn't go in for that kill. You know, Woodley. But Woodley, in his last fight, he did. I mean, I'm thinking that if Woodley can imp- impose his, his size and strength, McDonald's like he maybe he did he go in for the kill last time, but he's not. Woodley's gonna have the killer instinct over McDonald. The problem is, is he gonna get stupid with that killer instinct because Roy McDonald's too he's too technical. He, he's really cool, calculated, never loses his head in a fight. So that could be the downfall for Woodley. That's a tough call. Uh, but I mean, the way McDonald's been doing it, I guess I got to give it to McDonald. Yeah, I think I can take McDonald that too. I'd like to see Woodley over McDonald, hands down. I would definitely be rooting for Woodley, but. I think McDonald's got the fight and got the edge. You think it'll go to the, the end? It'll go to decision. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. All right. Uh, Stephen Struth has been cleared to fight, even though Dana White said he never thought he would ever fight again. Remember, he had a leaking aortic valve. It just sounds terrible. Uh, and in a large just, in large heart this condition. This is like the first possible death in the ring. This this sounds like a he STD. He has a... been medically cleared by the doctors. He's now looking to schedule his next fight. I'm happy to see this, this Stephen Struth back. I just don't. I, I would never want to have a leaky valve <laughs> anywhere. It's anywhere that you got to see a doctor for that for sure. Get some, <laughs> get some penicillin. You know, Stephen Struth back in the UFC. I don't know. I'm. Are you really that excited about it? Yeah, I thought he, he was. He was good for the sport. I mean, he's, I like. I like seeing these like big, tall Dutch guys in it's, there. 
that who actually know their range very well. But his chin got broke so quick. His chin did get broken. Get, but he's got really good submissions, and he does know how to use his reach. Yeah, he just. I was, I'm just afraid he's gonna get knocked out again. We'll see. Yeah. Well, right. Apparently, nothing can stay together on this guy. His chin falls apart. <laughs> his his heart, heart disconnects. That's <laughs> what happens when you're seven foot nine. <laughs> So, apparently, there is a new app on the market <laughs> that is being sued by the UFC. Oh, this was an app? This was an app. Oh, I didn't know this was an app. It is... Uh, somebody Somebody had... Well, it was Eric called and told me that it was an actual, like... It was a game. Oh, it was a game? Yeah, it was an app that was a game. All right. It was the Ultimate Gay Fighter. Well, that changes my entire opinion about it. Okay. <laughs> As you can see... Gayality! <laughs> <laughs> what is a gay talent? I want to know what a gay in, talent is now. In Ultimate Gay Fighter, players take on the role of a variety of iconic gay characters, including drag queen, butch lesbian, Asian twink, gym bunny, golden chain wearing African American rapper, and drunken bisexual woman. Each character wields a comedic gayality move as a reference to common lesbian, gay, bi, transvestite jokes. Uh, the game has been attracted media interest, some positive, some not. Um, I'm going to download this. <laughs> they're they're going to have to change the name because the UFC will not allow them to use Ultimate Gay Fighter. Because it looks too much like you. I don't get it. I just the name. Just the name. They don't care about anything else. It's just the name. Wow. I, the way I heard about this was completely different. Can they call it There's the... There's the characters, if you can see. The Gay Ultimate Fighter? The Gay Ultimate... Ultimate Gay Fighter. No, I know, but what do they have to change? They have to remove Ultimate? Ultimate Fighter cannot be, I think, used at all. But it's broken up with the word gay. Doesn't matter. That's weird to me. I don't know, but I don't understand copyright law. So, you know, so like if you had a show, it was like the ultimate show for people who want to be a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too close? Yes. Possibly. Quite possibly. Is you're always a, downloading it. Are you downloading it? I'm looking for it. Is it only on Apple? Uh, That'll piss me off. <laughs> Yeah, don't ever look up Ultimate Gay Fighter on your phone, by the way. No, it says, <laughs> apparently it is currently in development on iOS and Android, so it wasn't quite released yeah, yet. No, they I have got, changed the name before. They probably tried to register it no. on the app market, and they were like, no. I got a Boy Ahoy for Gay Chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I got the, the gay... Popeye would be my screen name. <laughs> I, got the, I got the gay detector. Pop in your eye. So apparently you can get, you can get gaydar on your phone. Uh, and uh, male nude photography. And What's the difference between that and a regular phone? And then, I don't know. I take pictures of my balls and send them to people all the time. <laughs> and then, I have to have an app for that now? I guess. <laughs> well, all these, I mean, okay. Yeah, you got, you got, I like to stand over the camera so they also know it's me <clears throat> as I look down. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus the angle of perception makes your balls look huge. That's yeah, great. But then the last one on here is at the fights. American writers on... Cage fighting. I don't know what this is. <laughs> how that how that got put I'm in. I'm a little older. My balls would appear to be a glacier. <laughs> they would be like, what in the? F- I couldn't do that. We're in a speed bag. <laughs> Tight, like a leather puss. <laughs> Box them. <laughs> speed no, bag. Man. Old balls. No. You just hit the toilet water yet? Nope. <laughs> no. Still no, good. good. Still good. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz in the news because he doesn't get paid shit. Shut up. Jesus, I hate these guys. I love this. I love this. He he talked to uh, Eric Hawani, broke this news. Of course, he likes to do this all on Twitter and stuff. When's the last time he fought? Uh, he says, I don't get paid shit, and I'm about to tell the world. I didn't like what my brother and my partners got paid. Now they got a better contract, which still ain't shit. It blows what I get, though, out of the water. They deserve triple with what they get. I've been in the UFC for eight years and never turned down a fight. It's not like I'm getting paid twenty bucks an hour and they're getting fifty. It's like I'm getting paid twenty bucks an hour and they're getting paid fifteen thousand bucks an hour. They blow me out of the water. At one point, I can't even go to lunch with my partners anymore because we start talking about contracts in our business, and I don't have anything but bitter shit to say. We're entertaining entertainers. We get Shaq, Justin Bieber, Little John, all at the show. How are we entertaining billionaires? And I can't get shit. What do you think the strippers get to entertain billionaires? <laughs> Like a thousand bucks, <laughs> you know. I don't get shit. I get paid sixty thousand to show and sixty thousand to win. Uh, if I were doing this for fame, I would have quit seven years ago. I can't tell you what my brother or Gil make, but I can tell you that they signed a contract, getting paid more than I get the headline and win a fight. That's some bullshit. So you understand where I'm coming from. I can't even get money that they're offering me. I've been asked to get released because I can't fight here for that. I don't talk to the UFC. No one calls me. I'm not gonna call them begging. Can they we, know. They know. Uh, they know. Call me. I take every fight. 
they know what they should be given out. Can we reach out to, to the mathematicians and figure out what the ratio on 15,000 to 20 is if you break it down <laughs> to 60,000? To 60, right. Make that 20 to 60. What does that make the 15,000? I like this right here. Immediately, Dana White says, yeah, guess how much money he makes sitting at home? Zero. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> So you make $120,000 if you win a fight. And if you fight three times a year, I mean, that's not terrible. No. No. It's not. He, uh, makes, he makes more money to lose a fight than I do in a year. Yeah. <laughs> and he's on, and he has health right now. Yeah. yeah health, full health benefits. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel bad. <laughs> I think, I don't think that it's the problem here. Uh, I'm lost. It, How does he get paid in retirement anyway? Because he's telling people I'm not coming out of retirement. No, no, no. This is Nate. That, that's, this is Nate. Oh, Nate. We'll get to Nate okay, here in a okay, minute. Okay. <laughs> my, my problem with this, and, and I've said this a long time ago, like with the UFC, they, it's structurally sound. They have to pay. They still have to pay for everything. They still have to pay for the pay per view. Mm-hmm. They still have to pay for the, the stadium that they use. They got to pay lights. They got to pay union workers. They got to pay all kinds of shit. Dana White is probably doing something. He's keeping his overhead down to a certain extent yeah. by by giving a fighters a manageable paycheck. It's not that they're not getting paid enough. It's that other stars are probably getting paid too fucking much. Yeah. You Plus, know? like we covered before, they we got to go. Almost 15 years of millions of millions of loss. Yeah, that they had to fork out just to get the sports where it is today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're so, pulling out of pocket and still paying these guys. Yeah. I personally Other than like that, other organizations who would just be like, I can't pay you and just shut down. <laughs> right, because I, I just think, you know, as a common guy, I mean, they would give me or you three or $400,000 for a house or whatever. So if you're a millionaire, what is someone going to loan you? I mean, how 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 in in loan debt? How bad do you think they are? Oh yeah, that's a good. point. Fifteen too. years of loss. I mean, yeah. they're probably still paying back Guido and. Well, they, they, <laughs> they get, but they get. I mean, people in this situation, they get spoiled by the sports stars ahead of them that are getting these, you know, hundred twenty million dollar contracts over the next eight years right. and shit like that. And it's like in some instances, I think that's too much. Right, and they're in the video game, so they're getting paid from that too. Yeah, and I I always see the judo gyms that they're endorsing. Yep. I mean, they're getting coin from that. There's a lot of stuff to figure in that the they're not talking about. The biggest problem with the Diaz brothers, they don't know how to fucking manage their money. They're like right. Aaron. You know? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But whatever. <laughs> Alistair Overeem back in the news. Uh, this time he has l- been released from the Black Azillions camp. He also has been released of his management. He has now a new manager and is looking for a new place to train. He is talking about going over to Greg Jackson's. Even um, Travis Brown, who is their top heavyweight over there, is... Uh, Full backing on the experiment, saying that we're, we would allow him to come to Jackson's and work with us. I'd be excited. We have to see how he works out. Uh, what do you think? Do you think he's the next? He's like the Melvin Gillard of the heavyweight division for going to train training camps. This is his third management in two years. This I would is say, his now. I mean, obviously, it sounds like it. Third camp in and not very long. I mean, he's got to figure something out, man. He came over to the UFC. He was supposed to be could have been a contender. Do you think? Do you think that he would do well, at Jackson's? No. Why? Uh, because Jackson's very, very wrestling heavy and Overeem's not. But he needs that. He needs it, but he also needs a gym that he can openly work out with and improve his stand-up because that's what he is. Right. He needs somebody that can help him help him with his, his kickboxing. And, and I thought like he was that. having fun in Thailand. I mean, apparently he was over there getting massages and Hell yeah. training out in the summer and bringing in all these guys. And I think I think he needs to go through a through a wrestling camp but not train yeah. at a wrestling camp. I mean, he's got a fair tax or something. You know, that's that's my opinion. I think it's just his disposition. I was happy that he came to the UFC because he has that angriness that oh he that, can that, definitely you know what I mean. So I'm wondering if if that's just his disposition. They say that's how they he is say all Black Zillions. He was too much about himself. He didn't really care much for the team. He was there to train. He wanted to use the guys to train with, but he right. wasn't going to help them train. He wanted them to help him train. But think he's how many of your champions loner. that that's what they embody. Yeah, I mean, if you like in football to deal with DBs and and safeties, I mean, they're all about them. But that's that's what helps them perform. That's what they said Lesnar was all about when he had his whole camp. That he, you know, guys came in to train with him. He wasn't there to train other guys. Right. Lesnar's biggest problem at his camp, though, was that there was nobody better than him. True. You know, they, obviously, if if if, uh, if Overeem comes to Greg Jackson's camp, Greg Jackson is is leaps and bounds better than him when it comes to wrestling. Yeah. You know, he Lesnar wouldn't have anybody there better than him than striking, and he sucks at it. <laughs> you know, so it, it, that was a big downfall for him. And they said that apparently you couldn't hit him. You weren't actually allowed to hit, hit yeah, him. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Hearing rumors about that, that like they, he would get upset if you actually, not the face. especially not here, not the face. yeah, not in the stomach area. <laughs> you punched me my diverticulitis, man. Now I gotta go change my bag. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross! Why are you wearing it on the mat? It's weird. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> I got you in a colostomy bar. Oh. <laughs> Randy Couture <laughs> is upset that he recently spoke on Submission Radio that he believes that his son was not treated fairly in the UFC. 
All because of Dana White. Okay. He said that, you know, he was given that, you know, his son Ryan was given, he was 7-0, and was given Ross Pearson, who has over 30 fights, and that was an unfair first fight in the UFC. Also unfair that he was an unable to corner him. Also unfair that he lost his next fight, even though he probably could have won, but he wasn't there to corner him, so he lost, and he had just, even though he beat Ross Pearson, that guy with more experience, it weighed too much on him. And it was unfair that he got cut. Remind me, if we ever get a chance to talk to Dana White, I have to ask him about the whole Randy Couture cornering thing, because I still don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. And I think that Randy Couture obviously just needs to make noise whenever he can. Yeah. This like, is like don't, this... don't you got a movie to like promote or something? Yeah. What are you doing, Randy? This is the second family in two weeks. Last week, it was a Gracie's crying. <laughs> no, Bravo didn't do well. No. <laughs> now it's this week. But see, but here's what's funny, is that this is how this shit is all the time in gyms. Karate gyms, jujitsu gyms, MMA gyms. There's all that drama stuff. like that? They, yes, all the fucking time. And now <laughs> it's being put on. I'm not even kidding, dude. I'm not even kidding. There's like. I've seen quite a bit of it on, on Facebook. In well, I mean, the, the, local the, Twitter, gyms. the Twitter shit we see all the, the time. The local gyms have drama. Really? I've seen stuff with Art of War. I've seen stuff with. I could do it off the podcast. I could tell you some stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even going to put it on a recording because <laughs> I don't want to get a knock on my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but yeah, dude. No, I know all kinds of shit about some of the gyms around here. It's insane. They're like a bunch of fucking like high school girls, like cheerleaders and shit. Clicks, dude. man, clicks. Hey, it's like the fucking movie Carrie, dude. The Heather's. <laughs> serious. Jawbreakers. It's what it is. It's nuts. So Dana White came out and said that he wanted to have Nick Diaz fight Hector Lombard with a possible fight uh, title contendership spot. I actually really like that fight. I'd watch. Yeah, it. I think that's an amazing fight. Uh, he said Nick liked the fight, but then never heard from him again. Phone works two ways, Dana. Pretty much what Nick Diaz says, he goes, look, I'm not going to fight for less than $500,000. All right. <laughs> He's throwing out numbers. He's like, unless it's a title fight, I'm not going to be fighting any of these other guys for less than $500,000. But how much can you pull in He's like, on a Nick I've... Diaz fight? And that's the thing. I think he could. He says, he asked Dana, what am I getting paid? He says, I, I didn't turn on down the fight with, with uh, anybody. I said, what am I getting paid? Dana White said, let me get back to you and check your contract. So now both of these guys are saying that he didn't get back to me. Right. He says, otherwise, I am completely retired. I am retired. Unless the UFC wants to renegotiate for something, I'm happy. Or I'm going to be fighting for the world title, which is obviously uh, going to be something that I'm happy for. Or I make a ton of money. Otherwise, I'm not in love with fighting. I never was. That's crazy. I don't love the fight. I don't want to fight. Uh, I get my ass beat more when I win than when I lose. Uh, I know you don't want to get your ass beat. I feel the same way. I feel the exact same way about retirement. Retirement, I could give a fuck. Dana, pay this nigga to come back. <laughs> no, don't because no, they... do it. I, let's put the fucking money down. Fuck that. And, and watch him get his ass beat. No, because it establishes it establishes a, a horrible, horrible way of these fighters to just throw a fucking temper tantrum and then renegotiate their contracts constantly. Well, no, I'm not even saying like renegotiate one time. Give no, them not one fight, five hundred thousand dollars. Then if everybody, in, everybody in the UFC says that, but not everybody's Nick Diaz. The whole thing is it's Nick. This Diaz. is Nick Diaz, but. What if he gets his way? And then every single fighter in the UFC goes, none of us are fighting for less than $500,000. Are you saying then. if he gets his way or what if he wins? If you had to put an extra $5 on on pay-per-view just to see Nick Diaz come back and fight, would you do it? They should put that box on there. They should do they I should, would. I would do it. That's fine. You would. But from right, a, would you a, not? From a business standpoint. Are you standpoint, saying you would not? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying from okay, a business. Okay, so if they put that as an option, <laughs> we will get Nick Diaz back for this next fight if you're willing to pay an extra and $5. It's a, and it's a terrible business strategy. Why? Because they're getting an extra 5 bucks. <laughs> he just because added an extra five bucks two months ago. You didn't think it was a bad strategy, right? It's a bad strategy for the fighters. <laughs> every, then all of a sudden, every fighter says none of us fight no, for less I, than five hundred thousand dollars. I see where you're going, but it, it, what it, is Nick Diaz? <laughs> right? Because I'm I'm full well. I believe that he could tell him, okay, five hundred thousand, and Nick would go, oh, and there would be another stipulation. Yeah, there'd be yet another oh, yeah. move. They're, they're all jujitsu, sure only hitters, bro. Just talking two and nine. What? <laughs> Nice. All right. <laughs> For the first time ever, we are going to have the flyweight title on the line headlining a UFC pay-per-view. We talked about this when it was going down uh, before, how it seemed like all the flyweight title was getting put on TV. They're all the title fights for flyweight are on TV. We're now getting our first ever UFC 174. Uh, Demetrius Johnson will defend his title, title against uh, Bagatinov, Ali Bagatinov. I honestly think this is because of all the – headlining stuff that's getting moved around obviously that fight was originally supposed to be uh they better stack the card or this is gonna chris weidman but now they're saying pay-per-view. they're able to headline a flyweight title do you think no you think it has to be a stacked card they can do it but they got to stack the card underneath it they have to we've had we've had other uh, uh 
a lot, before we've had small main events. Like I'm talking like years ago. Yeah. But we've had small main events and they didn't sell very well. People like to see the big guys out there swinging, you know. Not the little guys running around and flipping. Yeah, they like to, they like to see. Although Demetrius Johnson did knock out. His last opponent. I'm not saying they're not impressive. I'm saying that people, the general public likes to see like welterweights and above, you know, as, he- as headliners. All right. And if you don't stack the card with, with, if you have a main event smaller than that, if you don't stack the card, then you're not going to get as many buys as you would if you put some big guys on there. I hope you've loaded everything because we've appeared to have lost it. Yeah, I saw it. We lost signal there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the stories I couldn't load. I was trying to see uh, right. who else was going to be on that card. <laughs> but dun, dun, dun. Did not happen. This, this chick right here must have ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> she ate it. The chick? <laughs> uh, I thought Sh- it was the big dude that died recently Shaw. <laughs> uh, Brandon Shaw has gone on Twitter He's been trying to get a fight with Mark Hunt And apparently it's going to happen I <laughs> feel really bad for Mark Hunt Or excuse me for Brandon Shaw going up against Mark Hunt anyway, I, feel, I feel bad for Hunto Hunto right uh, Mark Hunt you know, this got on Twitter They said this is going to be a great fight Brandon Shaw gave his thumbs up Mark Hunt tweeted back I don't and They asked him why not because he sucks. Why else? <laughs> Brandon Schaub comes back. Strong words coming from a guy who basically lost his last two fights and is nine and eight. Mark Hunt. Schaub, didn't Rothwell make you dance? And if you remember, Brandon Rothwell knocked out Brandon Schaub and he was like reaching for the heavens yep. or to bring his right. soul back into his body. I don't know what exactly was going on there. <laughs> he says, I'm going to open up a jujitsu school in New Zealand to help you out. Just so you have some clue on the ground. Hashtag McCorkle. That's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Mark Hunt says, be nice if you did, but while you're trying to sub me, I'm going to stand on them lips of yours. Why does Brendan Schaub think he has a chance in this fight? I don't know. Because he's <laughs> going to get it to the ground? No, he's not. He says, hmm, well, you just worry about getting back in shape and bring it. <laughs> Everyone says, you know, we like the contract. You know, Brendan Schaub is waiting for you to sign the contract. We've signed the contract. Mark Hunt says, look, I've never said no to any fight, especially from a noob that doesn't know how to dance. Dude, Brennan Schaub is going to get murdered. He in then this fight. says, Brennan Schaub, if you make it past the first round, you're getting your lips subbed and you will be my first sub in the UFC. How would you like that? How do you like that feel? Ha ha ha. He oh, says, ha, if you sub me, I'll give you my purse. If I KO you, you give me yours. Oh, well, right there. Once you knock him silly, don't knock him completely out. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of there. Just submit him. I like it. Uh, was great conversing with you all. See you all soon. Looking so he didn't say deal? No. Why not, dude? I'd take that all day. <laughs> but you don't believe that Shab's got just a chance? He's got a chance to submit Mark Hunt, yes. Does he have a chance to stand up to Mark Hunt? No. Not well, at all. I don't even think he has a chance. Brendan to... Shab's going to get knocked the f- out. <laughs> what about what about how awesome Brendan Shab was at that Gracie invitation that he did? Yeah, he did fantastic, didn't yeah, he? Exactly. That's why I don't think he has a fucking chance in this fight. No, I don't think he has a chance to sub him. <laughs> I don't think he has a chance to sub him at all. No, I would. His I would, takedowns don't look that good. Right. His submissions look decent, but his takedowns don't look that great. If I had any money, I would bet a good portion of it on Mark uh, Hunt. on Mark Hunt in this fight. Hands and I'm down. not even a Mark Hunt supporter. I don't know why. I'm just not. <laughs> but in this fight, I'm gonna be a big fan. <laughs> Dan Hardy blames the U.S. medical system for lack of his license. He's basically said that it's because of uh, the U.S. The United States medical system. He's unable to get a license in California. All right. Uh, he's recently been hired. As the color commentator, he was actually our Joe Rogan over in uh, Abu Dhabi today, looking like total hipster. He has his mohawk all folded over to one side. Nice. <laughs> and he's wearing like a black button-up skinny shirt. <laughs> he's not telling me anything I don't know. California sucks. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about your luck, dude. <laughs> he says, how, like, is, how is it everybody else is getting business taken care of? Apparently, he's got a worse heart condition. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have no answer for that. I don't know, man. Uh, Dana White recently came out and said that they're now going to be um, – um, funding out of, out of competition testing by athletic commissions that they're going to turn this over and saying that they're going to test the entire card. So not it's just, not going to be random. Just not just random. Everybody on the card is going to be tested. So is this a win for St. Pierre? <laughs> there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Good? See, this is more of the sure. appeasement. This is more of the appeasement that you're talking sure, about. Sure, yeah. Why not? I guess so. You're so, all right with this? So that you don't think this is a bad business practice? Do you feel we need to test everybody every fight? No, I don't feel that we that we should have to. But at the same time, if we if we got to keep a level playing field, then I guess you do. I so, mean, so you, now the entire card could come under. Don't I mean, do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard. 
I mean, I, it's like it's like jail sentences. You know what the rules are? Don't break them. Yep. You, you break them, you get caught, and that's on you. What are you doing? I'm currently cycling out of TRT. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cycling out of TRT because I don't want to break the. It was legal for him before, and it's not. It's anymore. not legal anymore. He's not going to break the rules. You know, <laughs> Melvin Glar got busted for cocaine. Can't do he's not doing it. He's not doing it anymore. <laughs> he hasn't in a long time. He hasn't got caught for it. <laughs> it's out of your system fast. <laughs> Dennis Siver is pregnant. <laughs> not supposed to do that either. It's yeah. got to be. It's got to be equal across hey, the board. That's pretty good. That means not every test proves the truth. <laughs> false positives. <laughs> false positives. False negatives. John Jones over the weekend lost his cat. His cat Mufasa. Did he lose his shit and did? And uh, I like like he was gonna kill himself. He offered up a fifteen hundred dollar reward, but then claims that the cat was worth twenty five thousand dollars. So John Jones, how much did that cat really mean to you? If you paid twenty five thousand dollars for a cat and you lose said cat, and now you're only willing to give me fifteen hundred for the said cat, I'm not doing that ransom. I'm not. I'm gonna hold on to your cat until you pay up. Well, because the cat <laughs> was worth twenty five thousand dollars once, <laughs> not twice. Now Is it's it only worth fifteen hundred. Now it's only fifteen hundred. <laughs> Yeah. It was a... It's used. As soon as he took it off the lot, man, it depreciated in value. Rare African surveil savanna cat. Whatever. Depreciated in value as soon as Dude, he took it off the lot. Dude, that looks like your local alley tabby. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> right? I can get you that same cat. I would have taken that cat like Pepe Le Pew style and sprayed it yeah. to make it look like John Joe's cat and sold it to him for $1,500. But if I had his real cat, I would hold out for the whole $25,000. No, that's it. <laughs> it's not worth $25,000 twice, man. Just once. But apparently they found Mufasa. <laughs> and the cat is back. He's so happy. So we know John Jones will not lose his fight now. I think it's possible that uh, Glover took Sarah tried to have that cat kidnapped. <laughs> I think it's possible that John Jones got drunk and went for a car ride and couldn't find the cat when he got home. Because <laughs> he left the garage open? <laughs> <laughs> I said I think it's possible. <laughs> and say it happened. It's not outside of the realm of possibility. Alexander Shlomenko made this really funny YouTube video, which I can't watch right now because the internet's down. No, it's back on. No, um, back on. We might be able to watch it. Uh, he, he's so Russian. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Comment of the show right there. This is straight up Ivan Drago style. Like he's so Russian. He's so Russian. You see our noses? They're not big, but they're just they're there. How many edits do they have to go through to make this thing? Because there's a lot of jump cuts, but he does have a bare gold chain necklace. You know what's cool is that they cut away because he started laughing. <laughs> no, no, seriously, seriously. Bring it back, bring it back. Okay, I'm mad, I'm mad. Oh, I can't do it, you fuckers, I can't. I will fight it your way. Even hey, take that off your head. You stupid you, you're crazy, you're crazy. <laughs> what are you doing over there with your fingers and stuff? You knock that off. You make me We're break trying to be serious. <laughs> To be serious, fuck you, Ortiz. Okay, okay, I'm serious. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I made good fight. Oh, see, he started laughing right to that. He was like, "Oh, you fuckers!" He said, "Put your dick back in your pants." It's not funny. <laughs> Are we gonna? We're gonna post this. We're posting this. Yeah. Oh, and then he wouldn't put it in Russian. So wait, wait, wait! Oh, I Russian. don't know. Should we post it? I don't even know. We need to cut this whole thing out. They're gonna mail us some type of. <laughs> it's game. Bellator. They're not mailing us shit. <laughs> they can't <laughs> afford posting, bro. <laughs> so what do you think, Tito Ortiz? He apparently accepted this job on Twitter. He, he's you know he went through the Craigslist sure. postings that we were yeah. made for him, and he <laughs> fighters looking fighters for fighters, fighters yeah. fights, <laughs> and he he accepted this on Twitter. He said he went to court for uh, custody of his kids. They cut good things coming threes. Went to custody for his kids. Jenny Jameson didn't show up, so he got full custody. Uh, he's been called out by the champ. Where was she tied up at? <laughs> those, you know, that's a reasonable question. Hey, those four chan guys, they had to shit a pay him back somehow. <laughs> oh man, right? <laughs> wow, way to go, four chan. I, I want to go back and watch that cat poop print video when we're all done here. It looks pretty funny. <laughs> there it is. Uh, and he's been cleared to fight. <laughs> Who, Tito? Tito's been cleared to fight. Sweet. He's got full custody of his kids because Jenna didn't show up, and the champ calls him out. He said today's a good day. I got neck injury five days before the fight. <laughs> Taking five days. Is this going to be on the passable first to second pay-per-view? Well, it's not going to be on the second. They're going to make it to two. <laughs> it's going to be on the first one. All right. We got MMA is getting its first themed beer, Submission Ale. Awesome. By the Front Brewing Company and 221 Industries. Um... Yeah, so this is up in... Is it going to taste like sweat? <laughs> Possibly. I, man, I could I thought somebody had sleeper hold stout. 
that is a wrestling move, sir? No, no. We're I... talking about MMA. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 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 the figure four porter <laughs> yeah but there was I think it's a uh, Medicino had it well this is now submission ale okay All right. the first ever MMA beer okay that's been released <laughs> like, that wasn't in someone's yeah, home I'm, I was gonna say I'm sure somebody has something in their garage <laughs> octagon ale man I made it <laughs> I made it man Kamosi versus Craig canceled at you of Ultimate Fight Night. 39. This was UFC, yeah, one, uh, one. Excuse me, Ultimate Fight Night Thirty Nine, which happened down in Abu Dhabi. This fight was canceled last minute because uh, Andrew Craig had tonsillitis. Really? Yep. Or, excuse know. me, uh, Chris Kamosi had tonsillitis. I still, I'm still bewildered at the fact that people still have their tonsils. I have sense. my tonsils. I don't understand it. I have mine. I don't understand it. And my wisdom teeth and my appendix. We've had this discussion. I, have I know. My, I don't new, have my wisdom teeth. You're unevolved. Okay. <laughs> Why are you gonna talk about my forehead? <laughs> uh, it's a six head. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Not Bro, quite Magnum forty five. Not quite as big as Tiger Banks, but it's getting there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't just don't keep tightening up your weave, you'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> talk about my buckshot. <laughs> UFC Fight Night thirty nine did happen today in the afternoon in Abu Dhabi. Would you like to go over the results right there for you? Sure, let's rock and roll, man. Jim Aylers defeated Alan Omar, split decision. Talas Light has defeated Trevor Smith, knockout of the first round in 45 seconds. Ronnie Yaya and Johnny Bedford declared a no contest due to an accidental headbutt 39 seconds into the first round. Nice. There is a gif. I will try to see if I can find it and post it, even though Facebook doesn't like them. Um, I know you can find it on Middle Easy where they are arguing after the bout. That's where you get to see hipster Dan Hardy doing his interview. And they are arguing like they, they were ready to start the round over and like start fighting again. Nice. Yeah. So hopefully they get to have a rematch really soon. Uh, Jared Rolshart defeated Daniel Emiliano Kazuk. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous decision. <laughs> I like that pronunciation. Ramsey Nijem defeats Benil Darush. TKO strikes in the first round at 420. So pretty pretty good finishes here. That's cool. Uh, Ryan LaFlair defeats John Howard unanimous decision. It was first round first round finish or it was decision. Yes. Wow. Clay Guida defeats Tatsuhi Kawajiri unanimous decision. I heard this was actually a really good fight. I want to go back and watch it. It's going to be one of those ten. It's bloody. I bet it's bloody. Yeah. And Roy Nelson knocks out Big Nog Antonio Noguera. Three minutes thirty seven. What seconds. do you do with him now, Dana? Cut him. I bet he wishes he was would have gone to lawyer school like his parents wanted him to. Big Nog was supposed to go to lawyer school? Both of them were. Well, then he got hit by a truck, ruined that, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, buzzkill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, what do you do with Roy Nelson now? You were hoping that he was going to lose, and then you could send him off to pasture. But instead, he's on a fight pass card headline. He just won, so now what are we going to do with him? Yeah. Put him back on a main card? Main card? Maybe towards the end. Not a co-main event, though. All right. <laughs> I'll give him main card status. <laughs> Fine, then. And then we have belts are going down tonight on Spike TV. We're going to get to see a couple of UFC cast-offs. Joey Beltran going up against Vladimir Matashenko. Cool. And, Vlad- and uh, the janitors, excuse me, uh, the custodians. <laughs> <laughs> Custodial technicians. Custodial technicians. Farewell last match. Last fight. And Le- big LeVar Johnson going up against uh, Blagoni Ivanov. Um, yeah. Awesome. Excited about that? I, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Big Johnson, so yeah. yeah. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Johnson's cool, man, and I thought I think Joey Beltran's pretty cool too. Hopefully, the execu- the executioner, the uh, uh, Vladimir Medeshenko can can uh, win on his last fight though. Too, yeah, that'd time. be great. Yeah, hopefully yeah. next week we'll have some interviews for you. Yay! And that's it. All right, so uh, yeah, pretty much we don't have any fights to break down. No, no. Next week? Yes. Yes. All right, so there you have it. That wraps up another episode of Split Decision from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios. Big thanks to Five Fans Radio Network. You can get us on their Spreaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and their iTunes. You can also get us on our very own Split Decision, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and our website, splitdecisionmma.com. Get us a SD underscore MMA on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook, Split Decision MMA Podcast. Bueller and Dodge, and of course, Mr. Dennis signing off. Have a good night. We'll see you at the fights. <laughs>